Hi everybody, my guest today is Carolyn Lee Ming Gay, the purpose-driven founder of Lee Organics. Lee is a dear friend, model slash neuroscientist, and beautiful on the inside and out. Lee Organics is a clean skincare company that integrates ancient Southeast Asian beauty practices and traditional methods. Their ingredients go beyond clean. For every purchase made, Lee Organics donates 10% of profits to Project Orphans. Join us as we face mask and talk about entrepreneurship, listening to the universe, how she got her first 1,000 Instagram followers, and what gives Lee purpose. Welcome, Nellie. Hi. Hi. How are you? Oh my god. <laughs> Good. I'm so excited to do this. This is our very first entrepreneurs interview, which we're really excited, and I'm super psyched to interview you, Lee about you and your journey and your amazing collection. So maybe you could give us a little background and bio about yourself. I grew up in Malaysia. So I was born and raised there in this beautiful tropical country where you can imagine because you grew up in Hawaii. Um, so you know, like we had like <laughs> banana trees and papaya trees and mango trees in our garden and herbs and whatever. So just like I grew up in that kind of environment, you know? And um, I've always had this American dream wanted to go to America. But then what happened was 9-11 happened and um, my plans changed and I went to Canada instead. And I spent six years in Canada being a total science nerd. I worked in many different labs. Um, I studied psychology and physiology. I did like a minor in nutrition. And then I went on and I did my, my graduate degree in neuroscience or neuromechanics. And Girl, you are a neuroscientist. I love saying that about you. She's a model slash neuroscientist. <laughs> the other thing about me is I, ever since I, for as long as I can remember, I have crazy sensitive skin. Yes. So I'm very sensitive to stress and food, and yeah. I just feel like my skin immediately reacts to anything. So I have very, very reactive skin. Um, and you know, it's, it's like, you know, it makes sense because our skin is our largest organ in the body. And also, it's a detoxifying organ, mm -hmm. so it, it it sends a signal to us, you know, like when something is not right, and, and so I need to listen. Isn't that just a metaphor for everything? It sends it's a signal true. to you, and you have to listen. So That's true. Your skin, your body, totally. life. <laughs> While I was in grad school, my life just took this like 180 degree turn. I got scouted randomly. Um, by a director for this TV show, sci-fi TV show called Battlestar Galactica. No way! Are you awesome. serious? Wait, I didn't know that about you. Know that. Oh, <laughs> I was today years old when I found that out. Oh, <laughs> well, I, well I, so that's what happened. That's what brought me to. It was long story short, brought me to New York. No way! So I mean, do you know that actress Grace Park? Um, like Hawaii Five O. Oh, oh yeah, 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 totally, totally. So I was her double. She was a Cylon, and I was her Cylon double, basically. Oh so she was one of the main characters. Yeah, I'll show you pictures later. Oh my god. Okay, yes, that, I definitely <laughs> yeah, see photos. They, I'm excited. Basically, trying to make me look like her. I remember the first day I, I came to work on set. Yeah. Um, I walked into a spaceship. Whoa. And the the, the cast and the crew were so wonderful and nice. Yeah. And, yeah. Lovely. and a lot of them thought I was a model. But I didn't know anything about fashion. I used to just wear sweatpants and Lululemons, and that's all I did. I didn't know anything about fashion. That's, I just, that's really, what we all wore last year, <laughs> by the way. So yes, yes. yes, exactly. So that was like, what well, our outfit last year was like my outfit all throughout school. <laughs> it's perfect, mine too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was doing that. People just kept saying, like on set, like, oh, you should model, you should model. And I didn't know. I really didn't know anything about fashion, and I kept yeah. saying, no, I don't think I like it. But I, then, because they kept saying it. I finally just like sat and thought about it and, and said, well, you know what, I should tr try it. If I don't like it, then at least I can say I tried it. Yeah. And it was it was interesting because it was almost as if like the universe listened. Mm -hmm. And when I decided that, I remember mentally, I think like two or th two and a half, three weeks later, I got Scott about my mother agent, till, who's still my mother agent till today. Yeah. So, so you had the thought and then it happened. And then it happened. Like I was literally wow. went going to visit a friend building downtown Vancouver in yeah. Canada and and I was lost in the mail room and then this woman comes up to me and, and starts talking to me and she just happened to be in the same building and she was picking up her mail in the mail room. That's amazing. It was kind of wild, yeah. Why did you start with organics? I have always struggled with sensitive skin it's to a point where I, I've cried myself to sleep. I think for me, having struggled for so long with 
sensitive skin and finding a solution for my own struggles, I wanted to like love and serve other women in the best way that I could through the brand. And like just share this message of like nourish ourselves, you know, nourish our skin, but also nourish ourselves as a whole person. And you you know, share a message that basically you're beautiful already. You don't need to try to be something else or someone else or whatever, but you're beautiful as it is, and you just need to realize that and take care of yourself and as best as you possibly can and know how to and I want to help you. That's in the amazing. best way that I can possibly, you know? If you're going to give advice to a new entrepreneur, what would you tell them in terms of a first step to get started? If you're yeah. your why, I feel like then the other things fall into place. Yeah. And then next step is product development. I feel that is so important because mm -hmm. if your product, if you don't have a product that you're really confident about and proud of, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to believe in what you're building. The why and the product development, those processes are, they're really quiet and they're behind the scenes yes. and they take a long yes, time. Yeah. I feel like that's the part where no one sees what you're working totally. on. Totally. And you can get really discouraged during that time period. Yes, yeah. I mean, we didn't took two years of product development. Yeah, yeah. Two, you took two years? I, I took two More, years. More, really, actually. But yes, mm -hmm. let's say two me years. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, I would say two and a half years for yeah. me. Because I was also going through a crazy breakup. And, you know, it was <laughs> yeah, all so like, like life was getting involved. It wasn't your main job, it's mm -hmm. your side hustle, which is the case for so many entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah. What was your first step and how did you get started? When I decided, okay, I am going to build a beauty brand, yeah. um, I just started, started with product development. And I was already making my own beauty products and skincare. Mm -hmm. Um, for years. And Wait a minute, I'm sorry to interrupt. You're saying yes. you, you were building your own line for years? Oh, so I was making my own skincare for years. You were? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Since I was in college, so before I was even modeling. Oh my gosh, so this is like with your science background, mm -hmm. you would just be in the lab, like so, making up your perfect cleansers and moisturizers and all of that? I would actually do it at home. No way. Over my kitchen counter sink. Yes. And so the other thing was, I grew up with dad, who was this health, quirky health and he would tell me, oh, you shouldn't use like cleaning products or any kind of beauty products with this, this, this. It would be like sulfates, parabens, all of those things that 20 years ago we were not talking about and thinking yeah, about. But my yeah. dad was talking about it. But he was just, you know, ahead of the curve. Did he come from a science background? He was an engineer. Yeah. So he kind of knew the way chemicals worked and how yeah. they might interact with the body. Mm -hmm. When I started wanting to take care of my skin when I was a starving student in yes. Canada, yeah. I would go into a drugstore and See, everything had all the stuff that my dad said was not not good for me or us, you know? And so then I thought, like, you know, I wonder how hard it would be to source our ingredients. And, and so I would, like, source, like, you know, like, vitamin E, or, you know, and, like, different oils and just mix it together. And, yeah, pure retinol. <laughs> so, <laughs> and just, like, mix it all together and experiment. So that's how I started because I've always loved working with my hands and making things and figuring things figuring things out from scratch. So when you first started product development on Lee Organics, yes. did you just sort of like take a formula you had already been using and then try and refine it for the masses? Um, so there was one formula, yes, that it was actually this liquid number as well I was already using for myself. Yeah. Um, but the, it, when I was using it for myself then, it was a little different. Yeah. It was more suited for like my very, very specific skin. Right. And I wanted it to work for skin type. So then I started developing many different versions. I think I ended up developing eight versions. Wow. And um, and just tested it on my friends and my family and um, just figured out the one that worked best and just kept iterating and kept working on it. it. Took me a whole year actually Wow. to figure out that just that one formula. Yeah. And then I worked on the other ones um, in this and then, and then this rice pebbles I have been using. It's a traditional formula that uh, Southeast Asian beauty generations in, in yeah. Southeast Asia and I just wanted to make it even better mm -hmm. so we incorporated face oil like oil like plant oils into it um, so that you know it, it works even better and it has this like, beautiful scent it does I love it I and we'll, we'll be putting it on later so you can see us do yeah. it <laughs> Okay, now the fun part we're gonna yeah. get to experiment and just be girls and do some skincare which I can't wait it's 
This is gonna be fun. Okay, so why don't you start? I'm gonna do um, about six to ten pebbles. Rice pebble mask. How did you get your first thousand followers? So what I would do is I would go to other skincare or, or creators accounts, uh -huh. let's say um, other competitive brands or other skincare um, stores or retail stores that I felt were like at our at our level, and I would go look at their followers. So like for example, let's say Tata Harper or, yeah. or Tatcha or whatever. Yeah, they have let's say a hundred thousand followers. Uh huh. Um, you can basically scrape emails from those because especially if they have it when they have it on their well, and only if they have it on your profile. Oh so you know I how, see. So if they're like public. Yeah, basically yeah. if they're public and they have your email on your profile, yeah. I would email them. It would be oh. a very personal email. So I sent out hundreds of emails. Oh that's so but like one by one by one. It's not like there was an automated way to um, scrape I um there was an automated way to scrape them. Oh like a program or something? Or I worked with someone too. Oh wow, very cool. Yeah, okay. and then um, we would email them and say, hey, we're building this brand. We're launching so-and-so this, this date. Um, we'd love for you to check us out and just you know, like follow along on our journey. That's and such a smart idea. And here's our Instagram. Um, if you want, you know, you can follow us here too. And, yeah. You know, and we'll let you know and you can sign up for our email list and also if you want. And um, we'll keep you posted when we launch. And so we built our email list even before we launched, and we built our Instagram following before we launched. That's so like, smart. So how many how many followers would you say you had before you launched? You no, know, I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but I would have say it may have been um, just over a thousand followers, like a thousand. That's incredible. Or wow. something like that. That's I don't remember so good. exactly because that was like two years possible. I think one of the takeaways is like look at brands that are in your competitive set that have a customer base that are similar to one that you would want and then sort of see if there are any public followers amongst them mm -hmm. that might be ones that would want to follow your brand. Mm -hmm. I come from a family of immigrants and you yourself are <laughs> yeah. living an immigrant experience. I'm wondering how that's been and what how that's informed mm -hmm. the start of your business and how that's informed just your everyday life. I'm thankful for it. I'm so thankful to be here because I find that the experience that I had, having come from a different country and a different culture, I feel like I feel like I can bring something that's different. Mm -hmm. And I feel also so privileged to be able to be in a place where I can learn so much from such a different culture from mine. Yeah. And hopefully we can build something even better together. Yeah. You know, like blending the two different cultures. Like my husband is American from the South, so we do things differently from where he's from where I'm from, and he does things differently from where he's from. So hopefully, if we join the two, we can find something even better. That's how I want to look at it. I want to be able to build something that can contribute back to this country that has allowed me to stay here and and live here and you know grow here because I wouldn't have the same opportunities if I was still back. One of the things that I think is so ironic about the immigrant experience is that immigrants are dreamers and risk takers just mm -hmm. inherently because mm -hmm. because they leave their home country and every mm -hmm. single person they know, everything mm -hmm. that's familiar to strike out and do something new. But the, the irony for me is oftentimes they then tell their children to get very, very stable jobs that are predictable, doctor, lawyer, business person, engineer, blah, 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 you, you name it, you know it. I'm Korean American. And I certainly heard that narrative. But the funny thing is, like, as I've gotten older, I just laughed myself because I'm like, listen, I think that I'm just following in the footsteps of my own parents, even though they, they said to do something really, you know, simple and stable. But I'm like, no, I want to, I want to dream too. And I feel like that's the really fun part, the yeah. freeing part. So now I, I like to get to the part of founder faves. In terms of books, um, I love the book Good to Great. We were just 
Oh yeah, that, that is an book. awesome book. It Jim is, Collins. Yeah, I it's, love. It's an excellent book. But I also love this book called um, Love Does and Everybody Always. The author's name is Bob Goff. He has his new book now. It's called Dream Big, and I can't wait to read it. I love the autobiographies too. Same. Um, same. Nelson Mandela: The Long Road to Freedom. Is it The Long Walk to Freedom? I'm sorry. That is an incredible book. Podcast. Who doesn't love NPR How I Built This? Love, favorite, it's must listen. <laughs> so, so inspiring to hear other founder stories and other founder journeys and like, hear about their challenges and the crazy things that they go through, through and you know, just their personal lives too. Like, oh, I just love. I love Clavio. It's an email software, mm -hmm. which I think is great because you can build flows and you can, um, you know, basically have triggers for abandoned carts and all these different things um, and it connects to your Shopify so it works really well there. Um, I also have recently started using Canva. It's really great for someone who is not great at technology. <laughs> so now we're going to go wash our masks off but we'll yes. be right back. Yes. So we just came back and we just, we just washed our faces so mm -hmm. we're all clean. Alright, how does your face feel? It feels good. It feels like soft and not you know, sometimes when I wash my face, it mm -hmm. feels a little tight and dry. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel that way, so that's good. good. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to miss you now. Okay. Ready. Mm -hmm. I miss myself, too. All of your products always smell so good. Like, mm -hmm. natural, but again, that aromatherapy vibe. I really love it. Okay. Thank you. So. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, best piece of advice? It's not about the, the destination, that it's always about the journey. The goal sometimes, it, it sometimes isn't about the goal, because sometimes goals can change, and it always feels like it can be a moving target. Yeah. One of the sayings you talk a lot about at Reedon is walk with purpose. It's a hashtag we use in social media also, and it's really just a way to highlight people from the community and really ask them what it means to them to walk with purpose. And actually the purpose, the very first shoe we designed is a loafer and it's called the purpose loafer. So it's all kind of full circle back to this idea of purpose. So first and foremost, Lee, what gives you purpose? Hmm. I would say knowing that I've been given so much, um, w whether it is my health or my family or my friends or my marriage or the talents and gifts that I have and all of the things like you know just to be able to be here where I am like all of those things and just wanting to give back and, and, and love others and serve others in the same way that I've been given. Who inspires you? Who inspires me? Ah, my parents. Both of them for very different reasons. My dad, he's such a precious heart. Um, he He's such a dreamer. Um, and he thinks really differently and creatively, which I love and, and he inspires me. Like he's always helped me to see the world from a different lens. And like one example is like when I was in kindergarten, and I, I love this story because I, I didn't want to go to school. And I would talk, my dad would ask me, like, why, don't, why don't you want to go to school? And I would say, well, because I have no friends there, you're all strangers. And his reply was just like really, you know, well, strangers are friends you haven't met yet. And I remember thinking as like a four-year-old, five-year-old, like, well, wait, that makes sense. That's true. And I wanted to go to school. And now I wanted to go to school. But he just helped me to see a different way of thinking, you know? And so he's done that for so many things in, in so many different areas of my life. And then my mom, she's just the most giving person. I feel like I have so much to learn from her. She has the patience of an angel. She's so resilient and strong. Emotionally, um, she is truly remarkable and she is such a hard worker. I remember when I was in kindergarten, she was taking night classes because she, up until that point she only had her high school degree and she would go to night classes to get her diploma. And she started off as like a really, I think like a secretary or something when she first started working, when she was like fresh off out of high school. By the end of her career, she was at a, you know, a VP of her bank and yeah. What brings you joy? Nature. I feel like that's the one thing that 
uh, it will never fail to just make me happy, no matter what kind of headspace I'm in. Just looking at the sky and just how incredible it is to just like see. Well, I'm in this small little person on this giant planet, but then there's so much out there even beyond this planet. And also, I feel things that give me joy are my friendships and my relationships and just my family and just having that emotional connectedness with another human being is truly a gift. Life motto, like we were talking about just now, um, you know, it's not about the, the destination, it's about the journey, it's about now and the present and just giving your best and, and you know, I want to do that. I want to be able to do that um, every day. Yeah. This is <laughs> so fun! <laughs> Thank you, oh, Lee! Oh, my pleasure! <laughs> Thank you, Nelly. Our, our inaugural interview. Thank you for this. I had so much fun masking and learning more about Lee Organics and Lee. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Don't forget to comment, subscribe. <laughs> what are you supposed to say? Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and I think that's it. Okay. Don't forget to comment. Follow. Yes, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this and let us know what you think. Thank you so much. Thank you.